turun. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He will be Israel. Hosanna in the Son of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For he was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation, that we who follow Christ may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. As the Lord was entering the holy city, the
the lord be with you a reading from the holy gospel according to mark when they drew near to jerusalem to bethpage and bethany Paul leaves Jesus to of his disciples and said to them Lech opposite and immediately as you enter it you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat untie it and bring it if anyone says to you why are you doing this say the lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately and they went away and found a colt tied at the door out in the open street and they untied it and those who stood there said to them what are you doing untying the colt and they told them what jesus had said and they let them go and they brought the colt to jesus and threw their garments on it and he sat upon it and many spread their garments on the road and others spread leafy branches which they had cut from the fields and those who went before and those who followed cried out hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord blessed is the kingdom of our father david that is coming hosanna in the highest the gospel of the lord dear brothers and sisters by the cross who acclaim jesus in jerusalem let us go forth in peace We sing the hymn, All Glory, Praise, and Honor.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning, he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. And praise 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine. Yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death, on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. For the Passion Gospel, the parts marked C will be read by the congregation, supported by the choir. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by some trick and have him put to death. For they said, Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, Why 
and they were angry with her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you upsetting her? What she has done for me is one of the good works. You have the poor with you always, and you can be kind to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what was in her power to do. She has anointed my body beforehand for this burial. I tell you solemnly, wherever throughout all the world the good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told also in remembrance of her. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, approached the chief priests with an offer to hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted to hear it and promised to give him money. And he looked for a way of betraying him when the opportunity should occur. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you will meet the man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him, and say to the owner of the house which he enters, The master says, Where is my dining room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished with couches. All prepared. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve, and while they were eating at the table, Jesus said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me, one of you eating with me. They were distressed and asked him one after another, He said to them, It is one of the twelve who is dipping into the same dish with me. Yes, the Son of Man is going to his fate. As the scripture says, he will. But the last for that man, by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, better for that man if he had never been born. <clears throat> and as they were eating, he took some bread. And when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, and all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the wine in the kingdom of God. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith, for the scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. However, after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said, Even if all lose faith, I will not. And Jesus said to him, I tell you solemnly, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. But he repeated still more earnestly, If I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And they all said the same. They came to a small estate called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him, and a sudden fear came over him and great distress. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. And wait going here, on a wait little here and keep the wake. And going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup away from me. But let it be as you, not I, would have it. He came back and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Had you not the strength to keep awake one hour? You should be awake and pray not to be put to the test. 
The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came back and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy, and they could find no answer for him. He came back a third time and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. It is all over. The hour has come. Now the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is close at hand already. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up with a number of men armed with swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the traitor had arranged a signal with them. He had said, The one I kiss, he is a man. Take him in charge and see he is well guarded when you lead him away. So when the traitor came, he went straight up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The others seized him and took him in charge. Then one of the bystanders drew his sword and struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Then Jesus spoke. Am I a brigand that you have to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I was among you teaching the temple day after day. You never laid hands on me. But this is to fulfill the scriptures. And they all deserted him and ran away. A young man who followed him had nothing on but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him. But he left the cloth in their hands and ran away naked. They led Jesus off to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes assembled there. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the high priest's palace and was sitting with the attendants warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence which against Jesus they might pass the death sentence, but they could not find any. Several indeed brought false evidence against him, but their evidence was conflicting. Some stood up and submitted this false evidence against him. But even on this point, the evidence was conflicting. The high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence these men are bringing against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his robes and said, What need of witnesses have we now? You heard the blasphemy. What is your finding? And they all gave their verdict. He deserved to die. Some of them started spitting at him and blindfolding him, began hitting him with their fists and shouting. And the attendants rained blows on him. While Peter was down below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's servant girls came up. She saw Peter warming himself there, stared at him and said, You too were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know. I do not understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. The servant girl saw him and again started telling the bystanders, This fellow is one of them. But again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders themselves said to Peter, But he started calling down curses on himself and swearing, I do not know the man you speak of. At that moment, the cock crew for the second time, and Peter recalled how Jesus had said to him, 
before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. And he burst into tears. First thing in the morning, the chief priests, together with the elders and scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin, had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, It is you who say it. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up and began to ask Pilate the customary favor, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke again. But in that case, what am I to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him! Pilate asked them. Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown, and put it on him, and they began saluting him. They struck his head with a reed and spat on him, and they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shed out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama shapatani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come down to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel.
please stand. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died, and he said, In truth, this man was a son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary, who was the mother of James the Younger, and Josette and Salome. They used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women there who had come up to Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was preparation day, that is, the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arithmetia, a prominent member of the council who himself lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. And he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph, who brought a shout, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary, the mother of Josiah, were watching and took note of where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate Palm Sunday. It is the beginning of the end of our Lord's life on this earth. Palm Sunday celebrates the pastor mystery, his passion, death, and resurrection, anticipating for us the last days of his life. The whole life of Jesus was defined simply by his servanthood in doing God's will even unto death, for the sake of our salvation. And this is summed up in his passion, death, and resurrection. My dear brothers and sisters, we have heard the scripture text. We have heard and participated in the gospel reading. Today, the Lord is inviting each one of us to ask ourselves how we want to define the life that we lived. How would we want to be remembered at the end of our life? What epithet will be inscripted on our tombstone. It is important that whatever we do will be summed up in a few words at the end of our life. History always make it concise. A person can live for 100 years. We put it in just a few lines. For Jesus, it was clear. The man who died for us, raised from the dead, proclaimed as Lord and Savior. This is a beautiful story. I do not know whether it is real, but it's a story of a historical character by the name of Alfred Dombell. It was said that one day, when he woke up, early in the morning, and he read the newspapers. 
there was a headline that said, the dynamite king is dead. And of course, Alfred Nobel, he made a great fortune inventing dynamite, which is a weapon of destruction. And the journalist who wrote the report mistaken him for his brother who died for him. So he was emotionally taken out, not because it was a wrong report, a mistaken identity that he has died. That was not important. The important thing was how the world saw him as a dynamite king. Because although it was true, he was the inventor of dynamite. He was the one who encouraged research. And most of all, working together for new ideas and for peace and development. So immediately, when he realized that this would be the very way the world would describe him when he died, he wrote his will that upon his death, all his wealth will be donated to those people who have done research and those who promote peace in the world. And that is why we have the famous Nobel Peace Prize. That changed his outlook. And so it's important for us, as we follow Jesus into Jerusalem in his final days, we need also to ask ourselves, what about us? How do you want to be remembered? In today's gospel reading, as I was reflecting, it's a very long gospel, of course. In this gospel, we have different characters, personalities that have been mentioned. And these people have been mentioned simply because they have done something great in their life, something that has contributed for better or for worse. That is why in the passion narrative during the Holy Week, everyone is asked to participate in the passion reading because we are supposed to identify ourselves with the different personalities because they invite us to identify ourselves with them. So how would you define yourself? Then we look at the certain characters. We have, of course, firstly, the woman in the gospel. She was the one who brought costly ointment, pure not. It was really costly to annoy the body of Jesus. And of course, she was criticized for being wasteful, extravagant. But Jesus sided with her because she was preparing the body of Jesus for burial. And Jesus said, what she has done will be told also in remembrance of her. The woman who loved Jesus so extravagantly because the Lord has loved her in the same way and more. It also invites us to reflect, therefore, on how we treat others. How do we make use of our resources in a way that is truly beneficial? What are the values that we have in life? How do we use 
our wealth, our resources for the service of God and His fellow men and ours. Then, of course, we have the chief priests and the scribes. When we read the Passion, we saw how they were manipulating the trial just to put Jesus to death because he was a threat to them. They got people to testify falsely against our Lord. They were remembered as those who put Jesus to death unjustly. They were the ones who were insecure, frightened of Jesus. And we too would need to ask ourselves, would we be also remembered that kind of person where we try to compete with people and those who are a threat to our popularity, to our status, that we will try to put them down even using deceitful and unjust means. Would people remember you as someone who was brutal, dishonest and selfish? Then of course we have Pilate, a very pitiful man. He knew what was the right thing to do. He knew Jesus was innocent. He knew he should stand up for the truth as the governor. But he was a coward. He seek popularity. He was more afraid of what people think of him. He was not concerned in doing the right thing. And so like many of us who are in leadership, and I can tell you honestly, in leadership, it is never easy. Those of you who are in leadership will understand. To speak for the truth, to stand up for what is right, is always a challenge. Because there will be all kinds of slanders, misinterpretation, distortion of what we say, what we think. And therefore, there are many of us as leaders, we tend to go with the crowd. What does the crowd want? What we'll do, we will do things to please the crowd, not about the truth. What is the most popular thing so that we can continue to retain our position so that we will not compromise our status quo. And Pilate was really a pitiful leader, one who has no guts. And he was remembered in the creed as the one who put, who crucified our Lord. That was how he was defined at the end of his life. We all remember Pontius Pilate. And then we have Simon of Cyrene. He didn't do a great job, but he was good. He carried the cross of Jesus. So now when somebody is of great service to us, somebody who comes to our help, you say, he is my Simon of Cyrene. The one, he was unknown, but the Lord helped, made him known simply because of what he did for the Lord. And then we have the situation of Judas again. How do we define Judas as a man? He was known to be the betrayer. That's all we remember about Judas, the one who betrays the Lord. All the other things we cannot remember. He betrayed the Lord with a kiss. This is really... And so sometimes when we look at ourselves, how often we betray people with a kiss. Betrayer is bad enough, but to betray with a kiss, without battling our eyelid even, when we deceive the people that we pretend to love, that we pretend to care for. Look at all the scammers. 
These are the Judas who pretend to be helping others, giving them discount that they love them. These are the Judas of today's time. And we need, therefore, when we're in a kind of situation manipulating people, their feelings for our own selfish interests, then you are that Judas. And of course, Peter. Peter also, we remember him as the man who denied Jesus three times when the cock crows. That all you remembered. But actually, thank God, Peter was remembered more than that because he repented. He encountered God's mercy and love. He was humble enough to turn back, unlike Judas. And he was forgiven and made the leader of the church. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, all these different characters, and I invite you during this Holy Week to go through the passion story again and ask yourselves, where do you fit in? I suppose we fit in all, even the cardinal himself. We fit in all these characters. If you think that I am not, oh my, then you better submit the letter to me. I will send it to Vatican for your canonization. We are all sinners. We are all guilty of not being faithful. And like Jesus, because he was faithful, he was exalted above heaven. And we remember Jesus as a suffering servant, never defended himself, the one who was unjustly scourged, crucified, put to death, but raised by the Father. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I leave it to you all. This week, you ask yourself how you want to define your life. That when you die, what obituary will be right of you? Maybe you should try to write your obituary this week. The kind of obituary you write for yourself, that is the kind of life that you should be living. If you know what is the end, then you will start to live from the beginning. We always start from the end to the beginning. If you know that is the outcome, that is how people is, are going to see you at the end of your life, then you will start to think, how should I now begin to live in such a way so that I will be at the end? And I tell you honestly, there is no greater joy in life because that is what the passion is all about. Do you want to be remembered as a successful man, very talented, very accomplished, very wealthy? Or do you want to be known as the man who loves God, the man who has given his life in service for others, who has given his wealth, his talents, his time for the service of his brothers and sisters in utter humility and obedience to God. How would you like people to describe you? Let us reflect. Lord, I believe, do Thou increase my faith. Lord, I believe, do Thou increase my faith. I live in the fire of my sin, creator of heaven and earth. 
today's readings, we are reminded of Christ's selfless love and humble obedience. Let us follow his example and humbly surrender our needs and hopes to God the Father. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope Francis, Archbishop William, Cardinal William Go, that their words and actions may always mirror for us the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that as it enters Holy Week, the powerful symbol of the cross may be a force of hope and renewal of lives, confronting many with the need to be reconciled to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, that leaders of nations everywhere may work to serve their people by bringing an end to war, facilitating reconciliation and forgiveness, ending injustice and prejudice, and restoring the dignity of all. We remember especially the victims of the wars in Ukraine and the Middle East. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholics around the world, that our participation in the Paschal Mystery may lead us to an ever stronger faith in Jesus, the Son of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering, that Christ, the suffering servant, may strengthen all who share physically, mentally, or spiritually in the hardship of, of his cross and restore their hope in God's boundless love for each of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of worship, that we may imitate the humble and obedient Lord by emptying ourselves so that we might reach out in love to the poor, the hungry, the homeless, and forgotten. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for own intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. God of the poor and the broken, hear the prayers of your family. Help us this Holy Week to embrace your Son's example of loving humility. Transformed by Christ's death and resurrection, may we also take up our crosses with joyful obedience, grandeur through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not marry it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is through the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, true Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless her Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may married to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, peace I lift you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. That you should enter under my roof, but only say the
us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, we have brought us to hope for what we believed, so by his resurrection, he may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Here are some announcements. As we approach Holy Thursday, we would like to remind you of a meaningful tradition that has been practiced in the church for many years. Please, reminded, please be reminded that mass collections on Holy Thursday, the 28th of March, will be made towards pastoral, charitable, and educational works which the church supports for both Christians and non-Christians in the Holy Land. The Chrism Mass on Holy Thursday will be held at the Church of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Haugang at 10.30 a.m. Join the priests of our Archdiocese at the Chrism Mass as the holy oils used in the sacraments are being blessed and as we renew our priestly vows. On the same day, the Mass of the Lord's Supper will take place at the cathedral at 7 p.m. in the evening. After Mass, we will have a time of adoration at the altar of repose until 12 midnight. Do note that the adoration room will be closed from 6 p.m. on Holy Thursday and reopen on Easter Sunday at 7 a.m. On Good Friday, there will be three services at 10.30 a.m., 3 p.m., and 6 p.m. Join us for Easter Vigil Mass, followed by a joyful supper celebration to celebrate new life. As we gather to rejoice in the resurrection, let us be generous in welcoming our new brothers and sisters who will be baptized and received into the church at Easter Vigil. We welcome a love offering of any sum that will go towards funding the fellowship after the Easter Vigil. Thank you for your generosity. And please continue to pray for our elect, candidates, and confirmants who will be receiving the sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil. There are a total of 48 of them from the Cathedral's RCIA journey this year. We pray that they will be protected from any attacks by the evil one, especially during this crucial period towards Easter, as we look forward to welcoming them to our family of Christ. For all other announcements, please refer to the bulletin. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O oh Lord, on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
Mother of God. Thank you for worshipping with us. This choir will be singing at 3 p.m. on Good Friday and on the Easter Vigil. We will not be singing for Monitor's Day. God bless.